So finally, we've managed to get our hands on the Pixel 4a. It's been a while since it launched globally, but it's here in India now. And in today's video, let's unbox it, take a close look. So this is the box that the Pixel 4a comes in. And I actually spent quite a bit of time searching for a knife. But guess what? There's a pull tab now, so you don't need a knife to unbox this. So going ahead, removing those seals and taking off the lid. We are greeted by the Pixel 4a, Google's latest mid-range phone. The only one they seem to be launching in India, because the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4 didn't come to India, the Pixel 5 doesn't see, it doesn't seem like it's gonna come to India. So this kind of makes it an interesting launch, the Pixel 4a, the only Pixel for the year. So let me set it aside for a minute. We then have a SIM ejector pin, a kinda sorta quick start guide. We then have this travel adapter, which happens to be rated at 18 watts. That's followed by a USB Type-C to Type-C cable. That's because the adapter end is Type-C. We then finally have a Type-C to Type-A converter. This is probably for data transfer, especially from iOS devices. So that's pretty much everything in the box. Let's now move on to the Pixel 4a. And guys, if you do end up liking what you see in this video, please subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any more of my content. So yeah, let's now talk about the Pixel 4a. So pick this phone up and the first thing you notice is, damn, this is light. At 143 grams, it's about 100 whole grams lighter than something like the Pix, I mean, I'm sorry, the ROG Phone 3. So for anybody who values ease of single-handed usage, this one's a no-brainer. This is probably as good as it's gonna get. And guys, this time there is no XL variant. This is the only variant they're offering. In fact, the color, only one color, only one RAM option, one storage option. So it's 6, 128, black color, this display size, and that's it. So before we talk about internals, let's get through what's on the outside. The back is plastic, but this is a matte finish, so the grip is good. It doesn't pick up fingerprints easily, but some smudges at times it does tend to pick up. Now the camera array, it's not so much as an array as a single camera and flash. Below that, we have a physical fingerprint scanner. Pixel imprint does work really well here, and that's very important given that the 4A lacks face unlock. So this is the only biometric option on this phone. Turn things around and we are greeted by this 5.81 inch OLED panel. There's no fancy refresh rates, it's 60 Hz, it's a Full HD Plus display, but it's a good quality display. I mean, the colors are a little warm, I'm not a huge fan of that, but it is pretty sharp, about 440 pixels per inch, so the text appears crisp. It's also bright enough, it's certified HDR, and it happens to be covered by Gorilla Glass 3 for protection. Do note that there is no IP rating on this phone. That's another area Google seems to have compromised on. But what is there is a headphone jack. With more and more flagships omitting the headphone jack today, this is a mid-ranger, but hey, it's a Google phone with a headphone jack, so I'm happy about that. Along with this headphone jack up top, we also get the secondary noise cancelling microphone. The power and volume keys, they are located to the right. The power key, it's of a different shade. This accent here is the only bit of flair that this phone gets. It's otherwise a pretty mundane looking phone. Anyway, to the left, it's all left clean, except for this tray. This is a single SIM tray, but this phone does support dual SIMs. The second one needs to be an eSIM though. And to the bottom, USB Type-C, and that's flanked by vents for the speakers. Now the Pixel 4a, it has a stereo speaker setup. So it's not just these speakers, but also the earpiece up top that you see. It doubles as a speaker, and the output is quite clean and loud. Right below this earpiece, we have a punch hole. And in this punch hole is an 8 megapixel selfie camera with f2 lens. And selfies have traditionally been a huge strong point for Pixel phones, and that continues here as well. From the selfies that I took, I really like what I'm seeing. The Pixel software features, they're all available. This includes night sight for selfies, the option to add background blur to shots that you've already taken, and not just with the Pixel camera, even with other cameras uh, from many years back, you can still add the portrait effect to it. While on the topic of cameras, the rear camera, the single camera, that's a 12.2 megapixel sensor, which is paired with a f1.7 optically stabilized lens. There's also dual pixel autofocus, so the autofocus is pretty fast. The pictures I shot, they came out very detailed, good colors, quite natural. The interface, that itself feels quite quick to respond. I think this is probably the best camera in the segment, like pixels usually are, so no surprises there. Uh, I'd even go as far as saying this is flagship camera performance on a mid-ranger. I just feel my initial impressions here I really like this camera. Google's software does make up for its hardware deficiencies quite a bit. For example, this is a picture that we shot with the rear camera. And with software, you can get this kind of zoom. This is 2x, 
7x. You can see the shot is still quite good. And as you can see, without a depth sensor, portraits, it's a pixel. So it does great with that. Now, what it cannot compensate for is the lack of an ultra wide. And given that most phones in this segment do have an ultra wide, even cheaper phones have ultra wides, uh, even from brands like Samsung, this feels like a glaring omission for me. You know how I said Google's software makes up for the hardware deficiencies? That's not just with cameras, it's also with the overall user experience. Now this is bare bones stock Android, Android 10. With usage, everything feels quite snappy. You can launch apps and get things done using the assistant. Open camera, take a selfie. Open Chrome, go to Crick Info. So there is an amount of hands-free functionality here. There's absolutely no bloat, no pre-installed apps except for the regular Google ones. So it's pretty bare bones and there's no ads, no weird push notifications. This is as stock as it gets. The hardware underneath, I would probably just call it competent. This phone is powered by the Snapdragon 730G and neither is it the fastest chip of its generation nor is it the latest chip available right now. So it's a, it's a one generation old mid-range chip and it's paired with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage like I said. The RAM, it's LPDDR4X so that's again one generation old. And the storage, it's UFS 2.1, so that's about two generations old. The battery capacity is 3140 mAh. Given we are seeing 4000 plus mAh batteries on phones these days, even on startup phones, even on ultra budget phones, this might seem like a glaring difference, but initial reports coming out from people who've been using this phone, uh, most people say the battery life is really good. So again, Google seems to have done some kind of tinkering. Uh, I will have more to say once I've actually spent some time with this phone. I will uh, talk more about battery in detail in my full review. So this is basically the Google Pixel 4a. So what's the damage? What is Google charging for this? 30,000 rupees in India. And that kind of feels like a little bit on the higher side of things. Now, yes, people can say Google is just like, hey, Samsung and Apple and it's got great brand value. But Google's brand value is for software. I mean, Nvidia came out with a chip. Uh, on phones and that tanked. Nvidia has got great brand value, but that's not with uh, chips on a phone. Similarly, Google is not known for their hardware. Their brand value doesn't get associated with phones themselves. It's more with software. And you guys know how much Apple and Samsung spend on marketing their phones, how much of that brand value they boost with those kind of ads and everything. So there is a difference. Now, I'm not gonna say that a Pixel phone needs to be priced as competitively as a One OnePlus phone or any other Chinese brand for that matter. Because no, I still understand that it is a Pixel and this is Google's phone, so it's gonna be priced a little higher. But guys, here's, here's what I feel, right? The OnePlus Nord, it's priced at $399 in the US, converts to about $373 in India. There's even a $335 version uh, for India. Now, on the other hand, the Pixel 4a, it's priced at $350 in the US and the Indian pricing that actually converts to $410. I'm not going to crib about it because this is probably going to be the best camera experience you can get in this segment. But hey, let's call a spade a spade. It is a little on the pricier side of things. So anyone interested in a Pixel 4a versus not camera comparison or a full comparison? If you are, let me know via the comments below. I'll definitely ma make sure that I try to get that done. And I guess that's pretty much it for this quick little unboxing and hands-on. What do you guys feel about the video? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, I guess it's time for me to bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about the video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.